Today I'm here at London Bridge. No, I'm not, I'm at Tower Bridge. <laughs> Today I'm at Tower Bridge, London's most recognisable bridge, because at 3pm today a vessel known as the Sailing Barge Gladys is going to pass underneath the bridge and we're going to witness the raising of the famous Tower Bridge bascules. The bridge was completed in 1894. It is about 240 meters in length and provides an opening of 76 meters wide. Its twin towers rise 61 meters above the Thames. The two sections in the central span are called bascules and they rise up to an angle of 83 degrees. Bascules is a French word literally meaning seesaw. Each bascule moves around an off-center pivot meaning they look a bit like a seesaw in a children's playground. They are better than a drawbridge because each side of the bascule is evenly balanced. From 1894 to 1976, steam was the energy of choice to lift the thousand ton bascules. The original raising mechanism was powered by pressurized water stored in several hydraulic accumulators. They were fed water by two static steam engines that can still be visited today in the engine room. By the late 1960s, Tower Bridge only opened a few hundred times a year, down from 6,000 in the first year. In 1970, it was decided that something needed to be done to make the bridge more efficient and economical to lift, reducing its emissions and bringing it in line with new rules around clean air in London. The installation of a new electro-hydraulic system began in 1974. Electric pumps were used to create oil hydraulic energy to turn the cogs and open the bascules. These new engines were installed while the steam system was still in operation so the bridge could still open for passing river vessels. In 1976 the work was completed. Tower Bridge became fully electro-hydraulically powered. It has remained the same ever since and the old system was disconnected. So what are the rules when a vessel needs to request a bridge lift? First of all, all vessels must send a letter or email requesting a bridge lift at least 24 hours in advance. Any vessel with a mast or superstructure of 30 feet, 9 meters or more can request a bridge lift. Bookings can be made by the ship's agent, the owner or the master. And the cast for a vessel to pass under the tower bridge lift? Well, it's absolutely free. It costs nothing. You can actually see the sailing barge Gladys waiting for the bridge lift just on the downstream side of the river there. So it should be another um, 15 to 20 minutes and uh, she's lining up ready for her approach. There are some thunderous storms over there on the south side of the river and by my guessing and timings it looks like they're going to coincide with the bridge lift so um, this could be a choppy crossing for the sailing barge. Still waiting. The suspense is killing me. I'm assuming the uh, sailing barge will not have the bascules lifted to 83 degrees. Um, this is the highest the bascules can be lifted to, but they are always lifted to the highest point when the Queen passes under Tower Bridge in a vessel. Okay, five minutes. Uh, 
Okay, I've heard an announcement on the bridge and I don't know if you can hear this, but the alarms are going. That means the barriers are going down. Um, the pedestrians are being told to get off the main part of the bridge, especially the bascules, unless they want to get lifted up. And the lift is happening. The famous hydraulically lifted bascules, they're weighing in at a thousand tons each and the bridge lift is happening and you can just see the sailing barge inching forward, ebbing forward towards the opening bascules to make her way upstream into what is known as the upper pool of the River Thames. That's the section between London Bridge and further down to Bermondsey Creek. It's just an incredible sight, a wonderful feat of engineering. Incredible to watch. So she's disappeared behind the North Tower and will appear in just a second. I think this particular vessel is pleasure sailing barge that goes upstream does whatever it needs to do with its tourists and then makes it its way back down here at around 6.45 in the evening. And there you go, here she comes. And that looks like quite a hefty mast. It's definitely got to be over 30 feet high, nine meters in order to qualify to get through the, um, the Tower Bridge bascules and there she is making her way up river. And immediately the bascules start lowering. They don't waste any time. There's a lot of uh, drivers up there, a lot of um, motorists, pedestrians needing to cross the bridge. It's pretty quick. So I was filming um, two and a half minutes ago and the whole thing's gonna be over in less than five minutes. And there's the gladdies pottering along. There we go. And the good news is we have just managed to film it uh, before the rain sets in because it looks like it really is going to set in. And they have nearly closed. They're just lowering into place. And there you have it. The bridge is complete again, ready to open for road traffic and pedestrians. The whole thing took less than three and a half minutes. Amazing. And finally, the bridge lifts about 800 times a year. There's actually a website you can go on and find out when the bridge lift times are and what vessels are passing through. I'll leave a link below. Now on to things a little more gruesome. Did you know that Tower Bridge has its own mortuary? Let's go take a look. It's situated over the north side of Tower Bridge, underneath the North Tower. Behind me stands the Tower Bridge Mortuary, or as it's known, Dead Man's Hole. While constructing Tower Bridge, Dead Man's Hole was built and designed to retrieve corpses which were dumped in the Thames or washed up there. In Victorian times, the River Thames was a dumping ground for almost anything. Even Charles Dickens lamented in his novel Little Dorrit. Through the heart of the town, a deadly sewer ebbed and flowed in the place of fine fresh water. It's thought that the construction of the Tower Plinths affected the tidal flow of the Thames in this what is known as the upper pool of the river. The currents would speed up past these huge granite posts and they created powerful eddies or whirlpools, trapping anything and everything in their path.
The bodies would be spun round as if in a washing machine cycle until being retrieved and hauled out into this white tiled mortuary. It's said the tars are white because some of those gaseous bloated corpses would occasionally explode. White tiles were much easier to clean. Now this looks like the pole that was used to haul out all those heavy bloated bodies from the Thames. A bit gruesome. Thanks for watching Secrets of London with me, Mark Munro. Leave any comments down below. Hey, why not subscribe? Oh yeah, and why not take a look at another Tower Bridge episode I did about this fascinating post behind me. You'll be amazed. Until next time, stay tuned.